Today we're talking about sine law. So, so far we've talked about Pythagorean theorem, sine ratio, cosine ratio, and tangent ratio, um, but they only work when you have a triangle that is a right angled triangle, meaning that it has a 90 degree angle in it. Sine law is one of two methods that we're going to learn that allows you to calculate an angle in any type of triangle. So it doesn't have to just be one that has a 90 degree angle. So you'll notice this triangle in my picture does not have a right angle. It doesn't have a little square in one of the corners. So when I'm doing sine law, um, we label our sides a little differently than when we would do sine ratio. Um, so when we were doing the right angle triangles, we were labeling the opposite, the hypotenuse, and the adjacent. Here, I don't have a hypotenuse, um, and so it's a bit of a problem. So the way we label our sides and our angles is we use capital letters for the angles in the corners, and we use lowercase letters for the opposite sides. So this triangle has an angle A. And across from angle A, we would have side A. And I used a lowercase a to mark that. Lower cases are always sides. Uppercase or capital letters are always angles. And then the other ones I'm going to give other letters. I always use A as the angle in the question. Um, but maybe we will call this one B, which means across from angle B, we would have little side B. And then maybe we'll call this angle C. And then across from there is going to be little side C. So sine law is a ratio of opposite sides and their angles. So the rule says that sine of angle A divided by side A would give me a number. And I would get the same number if I divided sine of angle B by side B, and I would also get the same number if I divided sine of angle C by side C. Now, you cannot solve an equation that has two different equal signs and three different parts. Um, so what we end up doing is we end up using two of these at any time. So you might do sine A over A equals sine B over B. You might do sine B over B equals sine C over C, or you might do sine A over A equals sine C over C. So you're just going to use two of those at a time. So the best thing for us to do is jump in and actually try an example to see how this works. So we have two questions we're going to try together. The first one says solve for X in the following diagrams, and then round final answers to two decimal places. So when I look at this triangle that I have here, I notice there's an angle of 120 degrees, there's an angle of 35 degrees, there's a side of 25 degrees, and this side here is the one that I want to find. Um, one of the big things I notice is that it doesn't have a right angle. So I cannot use Pythagorean theorem, I cannot use Sokotoa or the sine cos and tan ratios. This is where I would use sine law. Now I'm going to label my sides A, B, and C. And I always start with A, and I always make A an angle that I know. So in this question, I actually know two different angles. So I do actually have a preference which one I want to call A. I'm going to look to see the sides across from them. So if I look at the 120, the side across from that is an X. That's what we're trying to find. And if I look at the 35, the side across from that is the 25. So I'm going to let A be the angle where I know the side across from it. So I'm going to call this one A. So if this is angle A, this is going to become little side A. And then it's up to you. If you want to call this B, you can call this B. If you want to put B over here, that's fine too. I think I will call this B, which makes this little B. And then we'll call this C, which makes this little C. So when I go to use my formula and actually solve, I want to look for an angle and a side that I know both values for. So when I say an angle and a side, I mean an angle and an opposite side. So I am going to look to see if I can find an angle and an opposite side that I know both numbers for. And that would be pair 
A. In pair A, I know that it's 35 degrees and the opposite side is 25. So I know that when I'm doing my sine law, I am going to use A. So I'm going to do sine A over A as part of my formula. Then I'm going to look to see what letter pair has what I want. So what we're trying to find is X, and that is part of pair B. So that's the 120 and the X. So the other one that I'm going to use is B. So I'm going to do equals sine B over B. Now, I am not going to use C. I don't know anything about C. I don't know what angle C is. I don't know what side C is, and I really don't care. So you can only use two parts of the formula at any given time. So I would choose to use A because I know both numbers for A, and B because B has what I'm looking for. So now all I need to do is substitute in my numbers. So angle A is 35 degrees, so I have sine of 35 degrees divided by little a is side a that is 25 centimeters I'm just going to put 25 and then that equals sine of B so 120 degrees so sine of 120 degrees divided by side B which is this one and that's X so from here what I need to do is I don't want to have fractions. And what we learned how to do when we were working with the sine, cos, and tan ratios is cross multiply. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to start by multiplying x by sine of 35. So I'm going to say x times sine of 35 equals. And then I'm going to multiply the other side by 25. So I'm going to get 25 times sine 120. Okay, from here you have a choice. So I'm going to walk you through the two different things that you could do and then it's up to you to pick whatever makes the most sense to you. So option number one, you can use decimals. But if you choose to use decimals, you have to write down all of the decimal places. So one of the things I could do from here is I could work out sine of 35. So if you have a calculator where you see what you type in on the screen, you would press sine 35, you're good to go. I can't do that. I have to do 35 and sine. I also always check whether I tell you I'm doing it or not to see that I'm in degrees. So I'm going to keep every single one of these last decimal places. So I'm going to do x times 0 0.5735764436, and then that equals, and then I'm going to work out 25 times sine of 120. So if you see what you type in on the screen, you just type that in. But I have to do 25 times 120 sine equals, and I get 21.65063509. Now, if you were to round this number to two decimal places and round this to two decimal places, your final answer wouldn't be right. Um, it would be off by a little bit. And it doesn't really matter so much in math class, but if you are using this skill to design bridges or to build buildings, you want to be as accurate as possible. So it's a good idea to keep as many of those decimals as you can. And if you don't like the decimals, we'll talk about a different method you can use in a minute. So from here, what I need to do is I need to get x by itself by dividing both sides by that decimal. So 0 0.57357646436. So I still have this number on my calculator, the 21.65, all those decimals. So I am just going to divide by 0.57357646. Three, six. And I'm trying to be really careful and make sure that I put the numbers in all of them incorrectly. 
Um, so I get that x equals 37.74673307. Now this is my final answer. And because it's my final answer, I actually can round. So I like to do two decimal places. That would be 37.74. I take a peek at the next decimal. It's a 6, which means that's going to push that up to a 5. So it's going to be 37.75. We were solving for a side. Our other side was in centimeters. So this is centimeters. And that's our final answer. Now, in case you are interested um, you and you don't like the decimals, from this step here, instead of making them a decimal, you could just do the division first. So take sine of 35 to the other side and divide. So you could do x equals 25 times sine of 120 divided by sine of 35. And then you can do it all in one step on your calculator and you don't have to worry about as many decimals. So 25 times, if you can do sine 120, that's great. I have to do 120 sine. And then divided by sine of 35, or on my calculator, I have to do 35 sine equals. And there's that number again, 37.75 centimeters. So if it made more sense to you to do the decimals and then just divide, that's great. If you don't like decimals and you would rather do the division first and then calculate it in one step on your calculator, you can do that as well. I don't really care which method you use. Whatever makes more sense to you. The only rule is, is that if you want to use the decimal, you have to keep all of those decimal places until you get to your final answer. So that was our first example on sign law. You can join me in the next video and we'll do another one.